Okay, folks. Basically, right now it is 1737.50 on this clock, and we are at the South Pole. Okay, there's a five hour difference between Central Standard Time and GMT time. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dive in here right away on this object that we've got. And you're going to realize that that is not any planet. Okay. We'll get it in at 999. And I'll be able to point. And you can see some star action basically also along here. It's coming along and it's not pixels, okay? It's actually stars, mm -hmm. clusters. And if, if you watch right here, I'll basically have to come down in size. And we'll step it ahead one. And we pump back up. We're going to jump in right away at 999 anyway. And you see the time and everything are on the frames and everything like that. So we're going to take a zoomer and zoom in on this because this isn't the sun. And it's not the moon. And remember, it's 1800 exactly. 1810, 1800 is when I first start seeing it, and actually a little bit before that because it comes up low in the horizon and basically I'll take you that real fast here. And then actually we'll bring it up in resolution a little bit. I went down too small on my, I'll go to like 150. Okay, and then we'll, the times get, you know, you've been watching the clock so that they ain't worried about the clock and then I can kind of just get here and step and we can uh, back. It's not there. It comes up. So we get four positions pretty much that we can see it through the time frames, okay? As you watch it here as I'm bringing it back, that's one. Then you get it by the, the windmill. Then you get it down by the container. And then you get it down just below, above the horizon. So now, we're going to get the magnifier and I'll bring it back up and we're going to see it at the last frame first and then we'll so I'll suck in at 999 you got the date and everything like that factual actual factual we'll go 999 right away just to get in on it faster don't have to waste around and then we get in with the zoom and because you, you see you got stars there like, see, the first thing I thought was like, okay, I wonder if the moon's, and you know, I didn't really pay attention too much where the moon's at. Well, this isn't the moon. I'm going to be able to prove it to you. And then you got to remember, because as soon as I went to Stellarium, I realized that, well, when we uh, suck in on the moon, or I mean, when you, when you, when you uh, see what's going on at 1800 UTC time, so that's what you got there. And then I'll move it over here. We should be able to keep sucking in on it right there and take a good look at it. And then you know, I, I like that they have that stamp. Now they're blocking us scientifically. They're not letting us look. But, but what there's a big cover up is the factual that some blue collar me has been calling out and hollering and telling everybody that, you know, Pan Stars is not, and this is more than likely very high odds that it's Pan Stars. If it's not Pan Stars, then what the hell is it? Okay, so we're going to go to Stellarium here in a second, but what I'll do is I'll, I'll finish up because it won't take too long at Stellarium because it's just a day later, so whatever would be coming up would be coming up around the same time and everything like that. Uh, there won't be that much movement on planetoid objects and stuff like that. So you get that there, you get a great view of what the heck we're looking at, and I can just go in, I can be ridiculous and go right in on it at like whatever I'm at right now. Okay, but it's not going to, you're just going to keep on getting in on a star and you're not going to find star cluster. That's correct. A radioactive star cluster. Basically, like I've been showing it. Now, this is not what is at Saturn, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, but they have hyperbolic stars at. And basically, this is probably whatever went with a hyperbolic star or any kind of star. It's just a star that fell out of space, somewhere in space. Van Stars, the American and Australian telescope, they found this thing two years ago, streaking through space. Okay? And it's a flipping star. It's not a comet. Okay? So factual, 
we're here at EMR and then basically I, I do believe I can go ahead and stay at 999 and we can go down and I'll go and, and I was here a little earlier thing with it, and then I'll be able to back up one Boom, we back up we go back up same footage at 900 and it's down by the windmill it's absolutely not the moon okay and then the windmill helps uh, give you the factual because then the light curvature hits black onto the black windmill arm and those stars are there it's a star cluster okay so we quickly we go out of the magnifier and I can even swing to the you're, it doesn't even really matter you know that we're at Nehemiah we got the stamp and everything so we go back down and then we'll hit uh, We'll back up one more. Now we got this one in one more position that we can be able to, to zoom in on this thing, which is basically more than likely factual. Actual should be pan stars. And then we're going to go to Stellarium in a few minutes, and I'll go from the. We're I'm pretty close to. Uh, and then we'll have to minus five hour or go ahead five hours because there's a five hour difference from the Central Standard Time. So then that's the tank down there. Okay, and then the starlight is glimmering on it and also the sun and so forth because the sun is going away in the north. Okay, and remember this is northeast uh, Antarctica. Okay, so we're back in on it and that's not the moon. I mean, if I was, I've already zoomed in on the moon down here at Nehemiah before and you can know what the moon looks like. It'll look like the moon. It's not going to look like a star cluster, but this basically actually factually is. Okay, so then I go back down. And see, they're blocking the south camera. Everybody knows that knows they're blocking the south camera right now. They're just giving a frozen shot of I don't even care about disclosing or even showing the pictures that they're that there's because anybody can go to these webcams at Nehemiah and they'll see what's going on. And they don't jam this one. And they were hoping that we wouldn't be able to see it, but we could still see it. It popped up at 1800. So. And since the reason it, and then basically that's it right there, okay. And it's a little harder to recognize there, so here we go. In at 200, and there it is, as you can see. And it's pan stars, more than likely. It's actually factually, this is flipping pan stars. Let me get in it. I guess I'm at 400. I'll go something. We'll go 666. Oh, come on, where's my custom at? Boom, boom, boom. Custom. We'll go seven seven seven. And we get the web EMR web steel right in front of it. So anyhow. So the webcam catches it and then we'll basically we just finish zooming in there on it when it first shows up. We'll give you the nine nine nine. And then what I'll do is I'll scoot over and go down and get the uh, step and we'll step it Boom. and we'll step and we'll get up and you'll see that the, basically there it is it pops up above and then step up and that's not the moon it's exactly more than likely actual factual pan stars or whatever cluster it is and it's following the sun because now we're going to go ahead and go over to and I've lost my magnifier some magically way so we will go ahead and go over to so we go to my found magnifier and we zoom in on it again which we're basically being a little repetitive here because we're looking at the same thing that we zoomed in on before but as you can see that that's not the not the moon or anything else we know. Actual factual. Okay. Great software we have here. And as you've noticed, they keep on trying to get me on some kind of a legal bold crap because they keep on constantly throwing certain things up on my. They select my uh, pictures that and denote my uh, videos, and they keep on trying to entrap me on some kind of crap well the YouTube and the Google's the one that will be the one caught on entrapment if they ever put 
uh, certain things on a window picture frame, and they keep on. And the the, the rads commercial, the one too. The I did the the rads, uh, and they took the. They didn't even show any of the shots of the yellow from the radioactive material. They just showed the the regular shots of Earth on my frame that they give you three shots to be of pictures and usually something yellow or red something bright will they'll usually use for a window but did they use the yellow radiation or anything like that on the map of today when I put up the uh, radioactive uh, video no they chose three boring pictures of earth so and they made sure that they did not show any of the radioactive track of what we're looking at in the ocean. Remember, it's in the air, it's everywhere. Fuka fudge up. It's called killing you silently and invisibly. Okay. So now this is radioactive star cluster because all stars are radioactive. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is a good example that more than likely your own sun is made up of a bunch of little stars and a gigantic snowball of radioactive stars. Okay, that's what your sun is made of. Okay. So factually, and if and based the fact and truthfulness, they are, and then it's just one sol solid nuclear radioactive atomic sun is what you have. All suns are radioactive. All suns give you beta gamma. Uh, all stars do. Okay. So let's go actual factual down to uh, Stellarium, and I'll, I'm going to pump pump out of this real fast as a shot. Try to. Boom. There we go. And we've been zooming in on that, which is not anything you know of. And more than likely may very easily be pan stars. May very easily be pan stars. That's how you get rid of your magnifier, not like how they took it from me. Now this is stuck on Eastern time. Okay. So it's always Eastern time usually when I you're showing my Stellarium. Eastern US Standard Time. Okay. I'm at Central Standard Time, so I'm actually 170226 right now, currently, okay? But we go back for the footage of factually actually go check the dates so remember this is East Coast time okay there's five hour difference here so there's there's only four hour difference right now from GMT to there uh, UTC might be another hour so we just ballpark it at taking a guess without me wasting time to check it right now so what we do is we need to go at least six hours we need to add six hours into time on this, okay? On the twenty on the twenty seventh, okay? Because that's what the footage was. So what we do is we move ahead to the four hours will give us. So remember, folks, we were eighteen hundred Eastern time. If we put six hours on it, and I've got the clock going, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to hit play and I'm going to go to. The the, would be the six hours difference so you pay you can pay attention to this clock but the factual is what they're trying to do is get in on what I'm recording they're using Wi-Fi there's a new phone company that has Wi-Fi phone and it goes from Wi-Fi to and what there is is basically we do have an international there's always a cell phone signal there's always a phone signal in the air all the time so they keep on trying to spy on what I'm going ahead and showing you what I don't understand so I don't understand what the big problem is, but the factual is, and I'll put the landscape back in on the ground here for a second, and as you can see, then that's all you got at the 2153. Now we want to get to 20, 2400 hour because that'll give us the six hour difference, but as you can see, the Sun and the Venus and Uranus and Mars is about the only thing in Mercury or everything there that you see in the sky that you would see, okay? Now I hit, hit forward, and I could just hit one more, and you're not going to have anything being around. And we'll get it going a little faster. I think that should be just perfect to be able to get you through the 2400 hour. And you're going to see that the only thing, we can, now we have our eagle, okay, and all this here, I'm not even going to read it off because it just takes too much time. But as you see, we're at like 114, okay, that's too early. So basically, factually, actually, that we have a Pan stars is a star that came and might have actually fallen out of some of the supergiants. So, and Rigel is one of those, and Sirius is known to be the brightest star in the neighboring area.